According to a 1996 interview with John Entwistle by Goldmine Magazine, the bass part for this track was recorded in one take. Entwistle claimed he was joking around when he played the part, but the band loved it and used it on the final take. And I'm very curious to hear what his version of joking around sounds like. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Low End University. Months ago, I covered Won't Get Fooled Again here on the channel, and you guys have been begging me to come back and check out The Real Me, which is from Quadrophenia, the band's sixth studio album released in 1973. It was a double album and the group's third rock opera. As I said, apparently this whole thing was improvised, one take off the cuff, and it made the final cut. Super intrigued to hear it. Let's get into it. The Real Me by The Who. Bass solo right out of the gate. Sounds like we're in C minor. Wow. Okay, real quick, he came right out of the gate, already above fret 12, which will get you a slap on the hand in most bands, but I love the way he just, you know, it kind of sounded like he knew the song. Of course, they were about to record it, and he was just kind of playing some lead bass stuff in between everyone else, which is pretty respectful. It kind of left some room for the drums, left some room for that intro guitar part, and just filled in the gaps. But it was very tastefully done. I find that really intuitive by him. Of course, he's a legendary player, I need to go back and catch up because I did not grow up listening to The Who. As I said in the last video, I want to kind of start from the beginning, let that go, and you can kind of see how this bass part evolves. But right out of the gate, we're up here kind of in C minor. <laughs> kind of stuff like that. Really tasty. Let's go. Okay. doesn't sound improvised, to be honest. Almost kind of matches the inflections of the vocal. I feel like that might have been his inspiration when figuring out what to play. Maybe he had the vocal melody kind of fresh on his mind and was just kind of almost doing a counterpoint off of that or just an, a variation. It's kind of the way it's hit me so far. Syncopation there. I went back to my mother. I said, I'm crazy, Ma, help me. He said, I know how I feel, son. Man, it really doesn't sound improvised. Like, it sounds very thought out. And I kind of like that he's being cognizant of the fact that there has to be some sort of real bass line in there. I guess there doesn't have to be, but he's really above fret 12 for a lot of it. Kind of going from the lowest frets to the highest frets, but I like that every now and then he comes back and goes. It's like, okay, I am a bass. I am the bass part. I'm just leaving home bass for a bit and weaving some melody in and out of everyone else. And it's, you know, it's almost as if I didn't want to know this was improvised. It's just the first thing on Wikipedia for this song. But it's amazing how players can improvise and just sound so fluid and natural. Of course, it helps knowing the song. You know, this might be a little bit different than improvising in a completely free-flowing blues jam, but it says a lot about his vocabulary and state of mind and being able to read the room musically to make it sound like it was a very thought-out and constructed part. Of course, I haven't heard the rest of the song. We're minute in. Let's keep going, but that's kind of my thought so far. Jeez. Back in space land. Can you see the 
tasty licks in there. Kind of back to the intro. Ooh. On those upbeats, man, it doesn't even sound like bass in terms of the vocabulary. It sounds like a vocal line. And that caught me a minute ago, and it just sounded like he's riffing on the vocal melody, which I've talked in previous videos here about how important it is that two melodic figures in the band, if you will, vocals and bass, most people don't really think of them having anything to do with each other other than the bass holding down the chord progression, the vocalist being the focal point up top. But there's a lot of instances in music, especially that I've reviewed on this channel, where the bass and the vocals come together and kind of go around guitars and drums and everything else and have this weird symbiosis in the composition. That is really what it sounds like here. And his tone is, you know, won't get fooled again. I heard a really gritty tone underneath the surface. And I hear some of that trebly thunder fingers type of attack, but it still has a smoothness that arguably blends with the vocals. And Pete on guitar, it sounds like he's really doing more of the bass work, kind of just staying static on a couple notes, just holding it down. Of course, Keith is back there weaving it all together. I'm familiar with his drum style growing up being a fan of Mike Portnoy. I feel like I, if I know anything about The Who, it's from hearing Mike Portnoy talk about it a lot. And that was kind of my only exposure to the band until now. And of course, his his drumming style is the most unique ever. The way he, again, glues everything together. But John is just on top, being more in the vocal territory than anything with the rhythm section. Again, he goes back every now and then and goes... <laughs> You know, just going up some scales, but he quickly ascends his way up higher. Let's keep it going. Right there. It didn't see minor the whole time. It's a great vocal melody. Yeah, the vocal melody is similar to some of the licks he's done. Uh, kind of that same thing. I've heard both bass and vocals do this a lot. And the bass is almost so distracting, it's like I can't even really hear what's going on guitar. It's almost like it doesn't even matter because this is like John's <laughs> entire, this is his monologue as a bass player. And you don't even have to really listen to Keith to feel his presence. It's just kind of everywhere catching everything and kind of making sense of all the rhythms going on. I'm going to go back a bit and let this play, see where this takes us. I love that chorus. Constant drum fills. So powerful. That was a catchy. C minor, just it's a, it's a good sound. It's a there's a lot of options on bass. Of course, it's not as easy as E, but I love that they've really just been static chord wise. Like it hasn't changed. It's just been one big jam in C minor. First time they're all really locking in. Okay, real quick, that's like the first time they've all been in like a unison of any sort because they've all been on their own wavelength so far. So. Pretty cool. Now it's everywhere again. Okay, I think I read from a lot of your comments in the last Who video, Won't Get Fooled Again. I think he uses a lot of three finger technique, but you can really hear him doing some kind of rhythmic diddles that really don't latch onto anything. It's just part of the solo esque nature of the bass line. He's just going, but he's creating a lot of these kind of. You can kind of hear that here just bubbling underneath. It's almost like he sat there trying to keep the momentum of the bass line up, but maybe contemplating the next improvised idea. And it's like, sometimes you can do that as a soloist. I'm going to consider him a soloist for this whole song. And sometimes it's good to just break away from going. Mm -hmm. 
you know, sometimes you just want to hang on a note for a minute and regroup, think where you are. Am I going to go down here? I'm going to go back up here. And something worth mentioning, this isn't my philosophy. One time I saw a Victor Wooten camp, and something he said was so profound that stuck with me about improvisation. A lot of people get caught up in improvisation. They're waiting their turn to play, and they're not listening to the band. They're just thinking about what they're going to play. And improvisation should always be looked at as like a conversation. You know, if someone's telling you about, oh, I got a flat tire and I got stuck on the side of the road and you're just looking down going, yeah, the weather's really cold today. Like that wouldn't make any sense in the conversation. You want to listen to what they have to say and then maybe say, well, I can share my similar story and you can respond, but you want to respond in the manner that you're fed something to respond to. Improvisation should be a conversation. People think, oh, my four bars are coming up. Think about what's being said before you play. How is everyone else in the band playing? Are they playing dynamic? Are they playing light, hard, soft? Are they playing fast, adding a lot of space? You want to kind of group all these things in and gather them and then think about what you're going to play as if you're having a conversation. Conversations shouldn't be too scripted. They should be free-flowing. I'm not reading a script right now. I'm just thinking this up off the top of my head as I hear this song. And it's an art that you have to get better at, whether it's a conversation, playing music. But I think him kind of probably knowing the innate structure of the song, he had a lot of great ideas. But even in a long improvised take, which is three minutes is a long time, he might have to stop on a couple notes, regroup, and think about what he's going to say toward the end. You can kind of hear that, and that's what I suspect he's doing here. Listen how he kind of rides on that C. Coming up. Right here. Been on that sea, just riding it. Okay. Might have been right there. He's just, he's, he's on that sea like a good eight bars going. Just trying to kind of keep the momentum up. And then maybe he decided to just go way up because he went. And that might be his last idea to ride this piece out on this improvised take. Riding on the sea. There it goes. Like a rock taking off. It's so lyrical. Whoa. That was a really intense listen. You know, when I listened to Won't Get Fooled Again, I watched that live kind of cinematic music video they had for it, live cut or whatever. I just wanted to get out of my seat. It was so intense, especially when that second big scream hit. And this was just audio, and it almost made me anxious. There was really nothing to settle into. You know, you had Keith bubbling underneath the surface, rarely latching onto a steady groove. And if he did, he abandoned it for just to catch something else maybe John or Pete were doing. Then you have Roger on vocals just singing an epic, just powerful chorus that was catchy. And it's just crazy. There was no chord change. It was one C minor vamp, really, the whole song. I mean, such a unique legacy for a band to have that's, you know, me getting into them now is better late than never. But I just stand by what I said. You know, if you hadn't told me this was improvised, I would have never really picked up on anything that sounded improvised. It sounded very thought out. Again, he might have had the advantage of, of course, knowing his own band song before he played it. But I think joking around and coming up with this is a true nod to his vocabulary, his awareness and cognizance as a performer, a musician, and a bass player. And wow, just very lyrical playing. And again, just having one chord to make it sound interesting. There's so many ideas, so many places you could go over one chord. And he really made use of that here. This is a crazy listen. I really want to hear this full record now. I've heard about the legendary Quadrophenia by The Who. You got to hear it. This is the first track I've heard from it. I know I'm probably catching a middle of the album sort of context if, if this is a rock opera. 
But thank you guys for your patience and recommending the real me. This was very, very cool. And just don't, you know, don't forget improvisation is always about having a conversation regardless of, you know, the environment, whether it's live or in the studio. He was certainly having a conversation with all of the other musical pieces in the song. And what a great listen. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. Please like and subscribe. If you want to support the channel further, come find me on Patreon. We have a growing community over there and I'm having a lot of fun. Love you all. Cheers. We'll see you next time.